I am continuing my video series on the fake history of Cairo. This is part 2 of the series. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous video, the link is in the description. I recommend watching it to get the full picture. Without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. The pyramids being so very ancient and unique, you'd think they'd be featured across medieval paintings, but there are none. The very earliest pictorial evidence I found of the pyramids in Cairo, are on this 1513 map by the Turkish explorer Piri Reis. We also see here a gigantic aqueduct system between the Nile and fortified Cairo. Type medieval paintings of Giza, or medieval paintings of pyramid into a search engine, and it brings up nothing. We have medieval paintings of cathedrals, town squares, cities, but not of the pyramids. Again, that's no proof of anything. Just because I'm unable to find something, doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Even so, it's highly unusual that a search comes up empty. It's not something I expected. Also, go to the Wikipedia page Egypt in the Middle Ages. Try a word search for Pyramid or Giza. You'll find nothing, at the time of this video. Isn't it strange? It's the most prominent structure in the country, Eve the wonder of the world, and yet, there's no mention of it. Medieval Egypt is all about the Muslim dynasties that ruled the country. There is no exploration of Giza, no expedition to it, no defense of it, no attempted destruction of it, no discussion about it. If it had existed, wouldn't there be medieval drawings and stories about it? Not even the Torah Bible or Quran, which deal with the Middle East, mention the pyramids. These holy books mention Egypt many times, but never the pyramids. In the Quran, it says this about ancient Egypt. And Pharaoh said to his people. I have not known a god for you other than myself, so Haman, light me a fire to bake clay, so that I could build a rise high enough, maybe I see Moses' god, whom I think is a liar. Knowing that the Giza Plateau may have been Babel, let's reread the story in the Bible. The Tower of Babel. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city, and a tower whose top is in the heavens, let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed the people are one and they all have one language, and this is what they begin to do, now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. Therefore its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end, to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. On Reddit, a historian summarized what he found, which is sparse. Quoting parts of the write-up. In the 15th century, the historian Al-Makrizi mentioned the attempt by the Ayyubid Sultan Al-Aziz to destroy the smallest of the pyramids, the Pyramid of Menker, in 1196. So, by the 12th century, some people believed the pyramids were full of treasure. The historian takes this to mean the pyramids were known in the 1100s. But all it really means is that someone talked about them in the 15th century, referencing something that supposedly happened in the 1100s. The European crusaders who were present in the Levant in the 12th and 13th centuries never really mentioned the pyramids, for some reason. The crusaders invaded Egypt in 1168 and even camped near Giza, so they obviously saw the pyramids, but the only possible reference to them at the time are the evidences of bygone grandeur. This strongly supports my idea that there was nothing there. If you're camping at Giza and don't mention the pyramids, they are either buried under sand or don't exist. This invasion was actually what caused Egypt to fall to Saladin. A few years later, Saladin sent ambassadors to the Holy Roman Emperor Frederick I, and Frederick sent his own ambassadors to Egypt in 1175. 
The ambassadors reported that a mile out into the desert, there are two mountains, artificially constructed with admirable workmanship from great blocks of marble and other square blocks of stone, a bowshot distant from each other, each of the same width, height, and number of blocks. Both are the width of a very strong bowshot, and have the height of two of these. Here's an idea. What if the Crusaders, Knights Templar, built them a few years before? The few alleged references to the pyramids begin after the 1100s. Around the same time, the Spanish Muslim pilgrim of New Jubair visited the ancient pyramids, of miraculous construction and wonderful to look upon, four-sided, like huge pavilions reaching into the skies, two in particular choked the firmament. The length of one of them from one angle to another is 366 paces. They have been built with immense hewn rocks, arranged above each other in an awesome fashion, and wonderfully jointed, having nothing between them that, like cement, would serve to bind them. Their tips seem to the eye to be pointed, but it may be that the ascent to them is possible with danger and difficulty, and that their pointed tops may be found to be broad and level. If men sought to tear them down, they must fail. Neither the German ambassadors or of New Jubeir mention who built the pyramids, but another Spanish traveler, the Jewish pilgrim, Benjamin of Tudela, calls them the granaries of Joseph. In the 14th century, Marino Sanudo wrote about the feasibility of attacking Egypt from Europe, and noted that there are some triangular pyramids, very high, which are said to have been the granaries of Joseph. If they are the granaries of Joseph, then the pharaoh built them to store grains after Joseph had predicted famine. In any case, evidence of the pyramids' existence before the 1500s is scarce and non-existent before the 1100s, with the exception of Roman and Greek sources, which we'll probably get to in a later episode. If you find it interesting, I'll continue in part 3. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.